G'day folks, welcome to another day at Ed Systems. Well actually no, my yard isn't this dirty, this is the uh, local junkyard. At the pile of dead everything. <laughs> Tell me where that video game reference is from. Well, collab reference anyway. It's a pair of old Fordson wheels, 1930s era. Um, bits of a Tirana or something, that blue thing is with the steering wheel hanging out. Various other crap. What was that? Early Pentium. Yeah, it's PGA 370, so it's like a Celeron or something mainboard. <laughs> very dead now. Delta power supply. Delta actually make very bulletproof equipment. Optima. Yeah. Well, that microwave ain't working again. So, display fridge. Condensing unit's long gone. Yes, not much else out. The electric motor up there, dishwasher. Yeah. Camping stove. Old Hoover washing machine. Injectors. Yeah, it's an old injector rail system from a big six cylinder of some description. Maybe Ford or something. Not entirely sure. It's a cold start injector. That'd probably be handy for a little um, little kerosene burner project or something. There's fridges and things. Old Maelli vacuum cleaner looking a bit sad. Hmm. Not an awful lot else. It's a conveyor belt of some description. Rollers. There's a mirror from the um, Pintara that was demolished the other week. Hmm. Hmm, behind the pile of dead everything. Some very old truck tyres or whatever they are. Heavy duty. Compressors that have been here for God knows how long. Oh. Danfoss drive. Yeah, seen plenty of them before. Oh, there's a rat in there. Get back, mousy. <laughs> well, that's one place for mice to live, inside a dead VFD. Ah, oh, Mousy's gone. Mousy did a run-up. Old compact desk top cover. Old one. Clothes dryers. Not a lot special, mostly just sheet iron back here. Washer drum. Yes, well, that's a tour of the pile of dead everything. What does it say on that fender up there? Rocket panel. Oh, it's a Corolla, lift back, tailgate. It's a big solid steel truck door. That's one heavy, heavy, heavy tailgate. Oh, that wasn't a bad little trash picking session. Oh, I'm just mostly wandering around, if anything. I did pick up a little 19 inch TV on LCD television. Same brand name as what I, um, oh, the plasma TV panel that I nuked a, a while ago. The one that lit up all crazy. They were sold by Kmart or someone like that. They're dirty, cheap things, so. Probably just a bad power supply. This one's completely inoperable. Um, yeah. Little plastic base to modify to put, mount my VFD on. I'm just going to put a little bracket on it so I can move it around easy enough. It's an old pull pump base from work. I get dozens of those. Um, yeah, we'll look at this television another time. That's why it's in here, just keep it dry. But yeah, a few people ask me what I want to do with this little car. Not sure. It's a shame it's so dirty and nasty inside, otherwise, I'd probably put the effort into getting it on the road again. I mean, it does. 
it is technically sold as scrap metal, but there is there are ways around it. Um, the auto trans fluid smells kind of funky. I haven't been able to push it, really give it a good hard run, and see if the auto plays up either. So that's another weak link in these. Starts and runs first time every time. Doesn't complain. Very well behaved little car. All the tyres on it are good now too, so just get in and move it whenever you want. You don't have to run an airline out and pump two of them up whenever you want to move it. I just put them up to about 45 psi and it's easy enough to drive around on the grass. And so one thing with manual steering and grass and dirt, it gets a lot heavier, especially at low speed. Like I couldn't drive this one-handed and film at the same time. I'd have to make up a camera mount and brace it in the door area, which is always a possibility. But she does move okay. Clunk, clunk from the drive shafts. That's another thing that it'd need for roadworthy and fix all the oil leaks. And the brakes on these are touchy apparently, a few people have told me that and just purely by habit I got in here one day and just started driving it and before I realised it I was using both feet. It's much easier to control that way and I've pretty much been doing that ever since with this one, the BMW as well. Every day driving to work and back, two feet, much more control. Um, thanks to Brad for getting me onto that idea. Especially if you've got an old carburetor car like the Jag, might try and stall when it's cold. But yeah, I'm going to scrap those window units too. Recovered all the good refrigerant out of them. I'll do a tip trip as well, there's a lot of rubbish and stuff that needs to go. Plastic casings, bits from that Philips plasma TV. Um, LCD panel bits there. Yeah, clean up, get rid of some of those old tyres. Um, I repaired that one last night when I was stripping some alloys down for scrap. Um, yeah, someone did ask me if I'd do a video on how to fix a car tyre like that, but I don't know, it's sort of like brake stuff. I don't advise people try and fix stuff like that unless you really know what you're doing. Um, yeah, I, I can show you how it works, but it's up to you and your responsibility if you want to work on, say, the steering, braking, or um, suspension system of a car. Yeah, it's not not hard, but if you get it wrong, it can be the difference between your life and somebody or somebody else's. So, yeah, don't mess around with stuff unless you're really confident in what you're doing. Just like high voltage, any even lower voltages, even 100 volts is enough to kill you, and if you mess around with it and become part of the circuit, you'll know all about it. it might not kill you the first time, but God, it'll give you a hell of a fright. I've been zapped by 240 volt mains before, and it's not fun. Usually by accident, I've never intentionally or done anything really stupid, it's been a legitimate accident, but yeah, you don't want to do it. So yeah, I'm going to clean up in here, I think. We're going to get a bit, bit of a storm and rain for the next few days, so I'm just going to put some stuff out of the way. Um, get that dra drum of jet fuel emptied into the other one up the back. So I've got plastic and metal drums there to put on the vacuum pump, 44 gallon drum to vac down. Um, yeah. That should be about it. Oh, hope you all enjoyed the update. I'm trying to think of anything else on the Q&A list, but the yeah, main thing is use common sense with what I'm teaching you. Um, yeah, great reception on the um, car brake video. I realised, I mean, Brad was kind of going a bit haywire about me blowing dust out of the brake, but I can understand in a workshop environment, if you're in a confined space and you've got people working with you, you don't want to be blowing that shit around, so... Do it outside with the wind blowing away from populated area. I mean, it's fields behind me, so it just blows out and it dissipates into so many parts per million that it wouldn't hurt any less than walking around town anyway. You always get brake dust off all the cars and things, and trams up in the city. So, yeah, common sense. Don't breathe it in too much. Wait till the wind's blowing the other way. And, uh, yeah, go from there. Thanks for watching.